graphing quadratics, I'm super excited because look, we already know this one. What form is this? Write it down. Vertex form. So we know the vertex. Let's go down to our box and fill in the vertex. Write it down before I can, okay? Inside opposite, outside same. Notice that on my axes, I kind of got ready for this. So my horizontal axis, I kept it counting by ones, but I knew that vertex was going to be at negative 25 on the y axis, so I counted by fives. Be sure and mark your axes anytime you change from single units. Let's plot 2, negative 25. Okay, if I know that, how many of the other things in the box do I already know? A lot. Axis of symmetry. Go. What about min-max? Well, this is a graph of a parabola and it hasn't been reflected. So then that vertex is going to be the lowest point, right? It's going to have a floor. So I have a minimum value of negative 25. Where at? At x equals 2. What's your domain on a parabola? Yes, all real numbers everywhere. So that nice double bar R or negative infinity to infinity. And then range, be careful, it's going to be all Y's. Okay, greater than or less than? Yes, you're right, greater than or equal to the Y coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 25. What about interval notation? Well, it would start at negative 25 and it can equal negative 25. So I put the square bracket all the way to infinity and beyond. So just by having that vertex, I have all four of those boxes filled in already. Now, let's talk about pattern points. Do you remember them? Start at the vertex, over one, up one. Okay, so I'm at the vertex, negative 25, go over one, up one. Well, that's going to be here at 3, negative 24, and 1, negative 24. Ugh. Yeah. What about the next set? Over 2, up 4. There you go. I like that a little bit better. So over 2, up 4. That means I'm going to be there at negative 21. Let's write that in. 0, negative 21, and then going over 2 units in the right direction, up 4, so now that's going to be at 4, negative 21. Great, I have three distinct points already. But wait, I also got another thing for my box. What's my y-intercept? The y-intercept is any time x is 0, right? So x is 0, y is negative 21. We found that out just by our pattern points. x-intercepts, ooh, I'm not sure about that yet. Well, let's keep thinking about our pattern points. If I'm back at the vertex, I'd go over 3, up 9. Well, from negative 25, going up 9, nope, I'm not. Okay, what about over 4? Up how many? Well, we didn't do that one a lot, but do we know it? Over 4, 4 squared, up 16, yes. Okay, what about 5? I think 5's going to do it. We go over 5. How far up do we go? Well, y equals x squared is the parent function. So over 5, up 5 squared. 25. Ooh, I like that because look what happens. I'm at 2 at the vertex. I go over 5 in the right-hand direction. Now I'm at 7 and I have to go up 25. Well, what just happened? I'm on the x-axis. Go back to your vertex at 2, negative 25, and go to the left 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm at negative 3, up 25. I'm at negative 3, zero. We just found our x-intercepts. Let's write those down. Did you sketch it in? How does it look? Did you make sure that it's rounded? I know sometimes it's hard to get that. We just need to make sure that it definitely does not look like an absolute value graph. Okay, last thing. Let's look at that axis of symmetry. I want to go ahead and sketch that in because that axis of symmetry is, of course, that dash line, where if we fold it over on the dash line, the two sides would meet nice and perfect. There's our axis of symmetry. Now let's just kind of check it with our x-intercepts. How many units are we? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Five units from the x-intercept on the right. What about from the x-intercept on the left? One, two, three, four, five. Five and five. Well, that makes sense. 
Hmm, let's think about that. Five plus five is 10, 10 divided by two. Hey, that's the x-coordinate of my vertex. Well, let's make another connection. How else could I do this? What if all I knew were the x-intercepts? So I think if I have my x-intercepts, I can figure out the x-coordinate for my vertex. Let's try. Negative three plus seven, do you see where I'm getting those from? Divided by two. Hmm, well that's negative three plus seven is four, divided by two is two. Look at that. That gave me my x-coordinate of the vertex. I like it. Looks like Mrs. Peart's graph is spot on. Look, I graphed it right here in my graphing calculator and it totally looks correct. I can see the y-intercept, I can see the vertex, and I can see the x-intercepts. Let's graph the second one. y equals x squared minus 4x minus 21. So I'm gonna unhighlight Mrs. Peart's and I'm gonna graph the second one. Wait, wait, wait a minute. If I highlight Mrs. Peart's again, are they the same graph? Whoa. So those two equations, even though they look different, graph the same quadratic. Huh, well what if I graph the next one? Y equals X minus seven, X plus three. Okay, I'm gonna unhighlight these two, graph that one. It's the same as well. If I, oh yeah, they're all the same. Okay, so looking at this quadratic right here, Y equals X squared minus four X minus 21. Well, if vertex form tells me the vertex, right? Inside, opposite, outside, same, what does standard form tell me? Do you notice anything about this equation compared to the points we found on the graph? What about the third one? Do you notice anything about that equation that correlates with anything on the graph? The negative 21, where is that on my graph? It's right here, it's my y-intercept. So this form right here, we call it standard form and the characteristic it shows us about our quadratic is the y-intercept. 0, negative 21. Now for this third one, I have this 7 and this 3 here, and I notice a 7 and a negative 3 as my y-intercepts, so they're the wrong signs. But wait a second, inside opposite, so minus 7 here would be positive 7 on my graph, and positive 3 here would be negative 3 on my graph. So this form tells me my x-intercepts. We call this form factored form or intercept form because it reveals our x intercepts. So keep in mind, standard form shows us the y-intercept and factored form shows us the x-intercepts. Now that we figured out all of these forms are equivalent, let's show it algebraically. So let's try to convert vertex form to standard form. Let's expand. I have y equals x minus 2 squared minus 25. I know it's tempting to think you can distribute that squared into that x and that minus two, but that's a binomial. So x minus two squared is really x minus two times x minus two. We have to write them both out before we multiply. So I have x minus two times x minus two minus 25. So I'm gonna go ahead and perform the multiplication first and then subtract that 25. X times X is X squared. X times negative two is negative two X. Negative two times X is negative two X and negative two times negative two is positive four. Don't forget that negative 25. You have to make sure you're bringing everything down to that next line so that these are all equivalent statements. Okay, from here, I can combine like terms. So Y equals X squared minus four X because negative two X minus two X and then minus 21, because positive four minus 25 is negative 21. There's my standard form, look, I got it. So now I know how to convert from vertex form to standard form. Let's see if we can get from standard form to factor form. Well, we've already done that. Here, let me copy down my standard form over here. All right, well, this is just factoring. I need to figure out, okay, what multiplies to negative 21 and what adds to negative four. Okay, I'm multiplying to a negative, so I know I'm gonna need a negative and a positive, and then I'm adding to a negative, so I know the highest product is going to need to be negative. So here we go, crisscross method. So I got x minus seven, x plus three, bringing down that y equals, and look at that, we have factored form. So we figured out that factored form tells us our x-intercepts, so seven, zero, and negative three, zero. Inside, opposite. Looking at the next example, what do we know? What form is it, and what does it tell us? Go ahead and write those two things down. Vertex form, and the vertex is inside, opposite, outside, same, so negative four, one. Our parent function is y equals x squared. Let's practice writing the transformations. Go ahead. 
vertical compression by a factor of one third translated to the left four units and up one unit. Now remember when you do this, it's really important to say vertical compression and factor because that tells us that we're multiplying that equation by one third. Translated left four units, inside opposite, outside same, up one unit. Let's go ahead and graph the vertex. So I filled out the vertex. Let's go ahead and do everything we know just because we know that vertex. We know the axis of symmetry, min max, and domain range. Check your work, make sure you have everything. On domain and range, I continue to write both notations because we want you to know both. So practice both, but remember, we'll accept either. Next, let's look at pattern points because we should be able to go ahead and quickly graph this, right? We start at the vertex, we go over one, up one. We start at the vertex, over two, up. Oh, wait a second. We have a vertical compression by a factor of one third. Yikes. All right, start at the vertex, go over one, up. Well, nope, by a factor of one third. So I normally go up one, but it's being compressed. So one times one third is one third. So I'd go over one, up a third. Eh, that's a little hard to graph. Let's keep going. Okay, I'm back at the vertex. I go over two, up four, but it's been compressed by a factor of one third. So four times one third. So that's four thirds. One and one third. Eh, still a little weird to graph. Back to the vertex, over three, up nine, but we've been vertically compressed by a factor of a third. So nine times a third is three. We're back to integer coordinates. Alrighty, let's do it then. We're at the vertex. I go to the right three, one, two, three, and then up three, all because it's been compressed by a factor of one third. Same thing to the left, over one, two, three, up three. Now it's important to go ahead and identify those coordinates that we just got. I was at negative four, I went to the left three, so then that would be at negative seven, and then I went up three from one. I was already at one on the y axis, so I'm at, now at negative seven, four. What about to the right? I was at negative four, I went to the right three, so now I'm at negative one, and I still went from that vertex y was one up three, so that is to four. On your assignment, you may be asked for the vertex and then the next set of integer coordinates, so we want to definitely demonstrate that. On this one, we would have the left-hand coordinate of negative seven, four, and then the right-hand coordinate of negative one, four. Keeping in mind that we have a lot of points in between there, but we wanted to have a couple of points that are easy to reference. So it looks like Mrs. Peer found her pattern points by multiplying her y values by one third because there was a vertical compression by one third. Okay, so I can see her three points here. If I were to kind of draw a sketch in, I could see that my parabola is gonna look something like this, but I'm missing a value. I'm missing whatever the y-intercept is. So I know if I were to convert to standard form, I could find the y-intercept because it would be that last value in my standard form, but that's a lot of work to do just to find the y-intercept. A quicker way to find the y-intercept is if you think about it, a y-intercept is where I intersect the y-axis. So that's where x is zero. Well, I have a function right here, so all I need to do is plug in x equals zero and I could find my y-intercept. So let's do that over here off to the right. Okay, what am I gonna do next? Now that I've plugged in that zero, PEMDAS says parentheses first. So zero plus four is four. Then what am I gonna do? Four squared is 16. So now I have one third times 16 plus one. What do I do here? 16 plus one? No, no. PEMDAS says multiplication comes before addition and subtraction. So one third times 16 needs to come first. So 16 thirds plus one. Uh oh, what am I gonna do here? 16 thirds plus one. Well, one is really three over three. Now I have a common denominator so I can add my numerator. 16 plus three is 19 thirds. So y equals 19 thirds. Well, what was that? That was the y-intercept because I plugged in zero. We write intercepts like points because they're points. So I've got zero 19 thirds as one of my coordinates. Now let's sketch the graph. Does your parabola look like mine? Be sure you have that nice curved shape. Okay, x-intercepts. Well, look at my graph. Do I have any x-intercepts? My graph never intersects the x-axis, so I don't have any x-intercepts. So I write none. Be sure you write that. Don't just leave it blank. What else do I have left to do? I need to find standard form and I need to find my factor form. Well, let's look up here. See if you can convert to standard form. Pause, try it come back and check. 
This one might have been a bit tricky. I hope you did okay. Look for the positive. Did you get it set up correctly? When we have that x plus 4 quantity squared, be sure and write that out twice. You'll notice that we haven't skipped any steps because we're still in that learning phase. So don't you skip any steps right now. So x plus 4 times x plus 4. Multiply out the binomials. x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16, which of course then we simplified before we finished multiplying x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now I'll distribute the 1 3rd into the trinomial. And you'll see that we got 1 3rd x squared plus 8 thirds x plus 16 thirds. And oh, by the way, we have that plus 1. Did you notice at all times that we kept that plus 1 coming along? Don't get lazy. You can't have it drop off and then pop back in. It's not allowed to leave the party and join back in. No. So we have to have that written the entire time. And then of course, Miss Ryan had already done a fabulous job of showing us 16 thirds plus one was 19 thirds. So there we have it, our final answer in standard form. Last, she left me to do intercept form, factored form. Um, you know what? I'm fine with that because what did she already explain? There are no x-intercepts. Well, if there aren't any x-intercepts, then it seems a little hard to have x-intercept form. This one is not factorable. Now later on, you're going to find out that we do have some mm, imaginary factors. Hope you're feeling really confident on this. Remember, you can always pause, rewind, rewatch, look at those notes, make sure you have a good set of notes and get to the assignment right away so you can practice these skills as we continue to build each day.